What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another joint video for you guys today. I've got the man Neil from Beyond the 90 LCFC with me again. I've got Saeed from United Central down with me as well. We're here to discuss the fallout from the top four race. Possibly the worst top four race in history and we've actually managed to one up last season's which took serious effort on all three of us to do that. So congratulations. I'm going to start with you Neil because Obviously, the season's over now. You guys are unluckily the ones that have dropped out. Personally, I was really hoping you guys had made top four, but it just had to be between you guys at the end. Um, it's going to be pretty obvious. I think we've spoken about it before, but what went wrong? Well, the thing is, if you take the Man United performance, I don't think we were too bad, um, but it was just United punished us. They took their chances when, when we lost the ball in positions um, and they punished us. And that's pretty much all there is. Obviously, Johnny Evans getting a red card in the 94th minute. It's going to kind of push us into next mm. season. But overall, it was a, it was, that was a typical lockdown Leicester performance. So I'm not too mad. But at the same time, it, it, we, 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 we lost out by, I wouldn't say the better team, but the more clinical team for sure. Yeah, I'd say that. Uh, one thing that interests me, what you said, you said lockdown Leicester. Do you feel like this has been something that's happened pre or post lockdown, or do you think it's been a the form's been declining since the turn of the year? Because you guys look like a completely different Leicester from 2019 to 2020. It, it seems like it, like the fact that we won, like uh, we had a couple of results that went our way. Uh, we had a four nil against um, Aston Villa, and we had uh, and and a two nil against Sheffield, where I thought we turned it around. But there just seems to be something missing, and there's something missing was our squad depth. I think we talked about it last time I was on. The fact that we had Soyuncu out. For example, for the penalty, you had um, Evans and <laughs> Evans and Morgan both rush, rushing out to Martial because mm. they knew who was going to finish that chance. So they both just went in and cropped him. If Soyuncu was on the pitch, it could have been another story. And then the, them kind of positions, uh, something like a Ricardo. If he was in, he could have really helped break up the line plays a little bit more because United defensively were making mistakes and we just didn't punish them. So I don't want to sound like I'm making too many excuses, but at the end of the day, I think these are valid concerns for it. But overall, since since January, our form has been we've been like in the bottom half of the table in terms of form, which has not been good. So it's it's something that we're working on, but. I, if we come to like European football, I'm just happy that we've got some kind of European football. We'll see how that happens at the end of the year. But you guys know probably firsthand how that's going to affect the season as well. Mm, and I wanted to ask you as well about your depth because top four would have had a massive impact on your transfer window for the summer. And I think now with you guys dropping into fifth place, do you think there's a bit of risk that you guys could fall apart from the rest of the pack? Or do you guys think you might be at risk of losing some of your key players or... Do you think any of that could be a potential for the summer? Uh, I don't think necessarily. I think that um, Madison is going to sign a new contract. He's one of the big players, obviously, we've missed recently. Mm. Um, he's going to sign a new contract. We can keep the group of players together with the manager that we've got. I think the issue is, potentially, is getting the transfers in for the squad depth. So this is the, uh, the kind of open-up question to both of you guys. Like, this is the first time I've experienced the Europa League in its current form, or Leicester are going to. Other th so we've played in the Champions League before. I know what that's like. And because we were top pot, we, we got Porto, uh, Copenhagen and Bruges, which is like three decent teams. Mm. So compared to them teams, how is like the Europa League? Because I know you guys have had experience in that for sure. I'm going to let the Europa League veteran United Central start this one. <laughs> um, it's, it's, not, it's not great to be honest with you. It's one of them, it, like, it, it will hinder your season because you've got to play Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday. And it's almost a case of when you play on a Sunday, you get the most fresh team who has a week off and they have a week to prepare for that game. So you lack the energy. I need a big squad. Like, we, we got away with it because we had a big squad. Um, for certain games, we were playing McTominay, you know what I mean? Um, Mato, Igalo was playing a lot of games. You know, we had a kind of squad depth in that kind of period. So I think it will all depend on, like you said, getting the squad depth and getting the players in that you need because... You can't be playing Ndidi and Timberlands in the um, centre midfield all the time. You can't do that. I mean, you've got Praye, but I don't know why he's not kicked on. Um, and you, you need more midfielders, I reckon. And, and I would say more centre-backs because it's an unforgiving uh, Europa League. It really is. It's very, very 
hard to build momentum. Yeah, I, I can see what you mean. The thing is, um, we're not going to have the money, I don't think. So we're probably going to have to recruit from our under 23s. So we've had George Thomas and like, uh, who was one of the main people that's coming from the under 23s. Harvey Barnes is another one that's coming in a recent few years. We're going to have to have more of them. So do you think that the way they perform and stuff would be desirable in the Europa League? Because they're probably the players that are going to be most likely to play. Yeah. Um, you could probably get away with it in the group stages because it's like one of where you're not playing, I would say, decent teams. It's more when you get to the next record stages where you play decent level teams. Um, I, I'm looking at Leicester, I'm thinking, do you have to sell maybe to get more better players? I'm looking at Didi and maybe Chilwell. If you can get 70 million out of Chilwell, and Didi costs, I reckon Didi's worth about 80 million for me. Um, mm. Go get Didi. You're looking at there, what, 100, nearly 160 million there? Would, would that not benefit you, do you reckon? Or are you thinking we need to, to, to get a better, we need to keep these players? So, and Didi would be one of the main players that we're going to keep. I can see his building for the future. With somebody like um, George, Tom, uh, George Thomas, Luke Thomas, I keep getting it. We've had quite a few Thomases in our time now. I think Luke, I can't remember the name. Anyway, Thomas that played on um, at, at left wing back is, is decent enough. But is he going to cover for Chilwell? Probably is yes, because Chilwell will get all the applause. But I think, <clears throat> as you've seen when we've played against him, he's not been, he's a massive confidence player. When he gets a goal and assist and stuff, he is absolutely <clears throat> amazing going forward. But playing him in the position that we did, a lot of times he'd run forward, get the ball and kick it back. So I don't know yeah. who's going to pay that 70 mil for him, but if there is going to be a player that is going to leave, it's probably going to be Chilwell. And I would be more than, I would say more than happy. I'd be pretty happy if we got at least like 60, 70 mil for him. Probably getting that for off Oz, to be fair. Because I know we're you think still looking you're in at for him. Ben, we're, I think we're still looking at Ben Chilwell. I'm not so sure now because we're now really focusing more on a goalkeeper after the last few weeks. And I think if we're going to have to get a goalkeeper as well, I think something's going to have to give. And if something has to give, you lot are putting a lot of money for Ben Chilwell. I can't even lie. Like 60, 70 million is a lot. And I rate him. He's a great yeah. back, but not so sure. Moving on to United. Actually, before I move on to United, I do want to add one point about the Europa League. You'll find the lack of quality in some of these sides is a madness. And I don't know if you've noticed that as well with some of your sides this season. But yeah. the Chelsea, personally, group stage all the way up to about just say quarterfinals, maybe semis, we could play at like first gear, second gear. And the teams we play would just never let us capital, would never capitalize on it. The lack of quality no. in the Europa League is mad. Semi finals was our only tough match against Frankfurt. I won't even throw the Europa League final into there because we couldn't beat Frankfurt over two legs. We had to take <laughs> penalties. There's some decent sides there, but most of them are just walk through. So if you're thinking about managing your squad, you might end up seeing a lot more youth players in there. And I wouldn't be surprised. But moving on to United, you guys, you guys are back in the top four. If anything, you guys have got third place as well. You snuck in above us after that Liverpool disaster class. How are you guys feeling? Because it's, yeah. I think it's a tale of two, of two halves of the season for you guys as well. You guys were definitely starting to come into your own before lockdown. After lockdown, you've been unbeaten in the Premier League since then, right? Yeah, unbeaten in the league since probably, I think since Bruno's came in, I think, um, which is kind of crazy. If you think about it, it's when he came in January. But, um, yeah, I'm buzzing, man. Like like I said to you, like, commiserations with Leicester because I feel like they gave a better battle. And I think I'm looking at the chances when Wes Moore in that kind of, you know, he's got the chances. Uh, don't don't mention that one. Where, yeah, you know, <laughs> there's been a couple of chances where Leicester could have buried us. And I thought they played the better team. We look nervous. We look very, very lethargic. Leicester look up for it. Um, and I feel like we just about made it over the line. But for me, I'm looking at my United. My United should always be there. Like I, I, I'm not really like head over the moon. I'm, obviously, I'm buzzing for the club that we're here and we're you know we Champions League. But this is what's expected of my United. This is what we we know United to be in the Champions League. But now we need to kick on. We need signings. We need to we need to build on from this because I don't want to be coming third again in terms of becoming 30, 40 points behind Liverpool. That should not happen again. I just feel like. The Premier League as a whole, I don't think it's a, it's it's the most quality of league, but it's the most entertaining. But that comes subsidised with the fact that 
teams are about 50 points behind Liverpool. And I'm like, that should never happen. Like, as much as what, uh, not Watford, like Sheffield United have been taking points off teams, that shouldn't happen where people are 30, 40 points behind the, the top teams. Is, we don't want Premier League to become like that. So, um, yeah, I'm buzzing. And yeah, but we go again. This is the time to move on now, kick on, really. And let, let's let's move on and bridge the gap. Yeah, what well, yeah. No, you want to start. Okay, uh, I think the I think you're right. This season it has been a bit lack lacklustre, which is why Leicester have managed to creep into them top four spaces and have been like one of the challenge, especially at the beginning of the year, one of the challenging teams. But I think at the beginning of the year we saw a lot of flops. Like yourself, um, I know that Man United weren't doing too well. Chelsea have got is that Chelsea? Um, Mourinho's gone to uh, Tottenham now. Um, Ancelotti's in uh, Everton, so we've got a lot of top challenging managers, which I'm actually really looking forward to next season to see how they strengthen over the summer yeah. and hopefully we'll have like Wolves are going to be decent. It depends. I think they've missed out on Europa League this year. So they're going to be challenging just all focusing on the league. So, and as we've seen, they've, they've been Man United, Man City twice this season. So it's, it's, I think we're coming to a good stage where people like Sheffield as well, that are really stepping up and taking it onto that next level, yeah. which I'm hoping they can take, some points off the big boys so we can so then we're like challenging into that top six because it, it makes things more interesting as well do you guys think you're going to mount the same sort of challenge for next season like just based off right now because we still don't know what the transfer window is going to going to be like but based on you guys dropping out the top four and with all of the other clubs by Liverpool and Manchester City knowing that they need to strengthen how hard do you think it's going to be for you guys to mount the same sort of challenge next year it's going to be hard. It's going to be really hard, I think. Um, and it's not going to be something that I'm looking forward to, to be honest, because I don't know how much we're actually going to get in. Uh, I would love, love to be really optimistic about it. And normally, most things I am, just with what's happened recently and just the lightness of the squad at the moment. And to see how, like, for example, there's a great player in Dinia. We, all, we could all see it when they first bought him. But then Ancelotti's just taking him onto that next level. Now, and yeah. they're spending a, a couple of times, I think we were linked ages ago with um, Bernard that came to Everton. But for example, he came, he came to our squad and we said, well, we'll give you um, 70, 80K as now. I want more than that. And then Everton would pay that money. That's the difference, I think, between that. And for example, they've got Ancelotti in. So I, I, I use that comparison because they're the team that are kind of stuck under the radar a little bit, especially this season mm. we're under Ancelotti. Next season, they're going to be up there. I wouldn't say challenging for Europa League, for, for Europa League and Champions League spaces, but they're definitely going to give people a go. As in terms to Leicester, it's hit or miss. It's really hit or miss because it depends on how we recover in the summer. Because as you guys know, it's not going to be a long summer for any of us, to be honest, because mm. this turnaround time is quick. No. And players like uh, James Madison will be back. Hopefully, Ben Chill will be back. Ricardo will still be out. So hopefully, and it depends who we bring in because it, it's, it's, it's just finished, but I, I'm not sure who we're going to bring in. Hopefully we get we could kind of everybody's looking at raiding the t uh, bottom three Premier League sides that have been relegated uh, as yeah. you usually do. But uh, I no, don't, well, I you don't could know. go for Ben Godfrey. Ben Godfrey would be good. I don't ben know who, Godfrey. Who's, that, who's that from. Centre back for Norwich. He's a good player. He's a centre back. He plays at centre back position. I reckon him and Jamal Lewis would be a good option if Chilwell leaves. Uh, that would be for me decent options. You gotta be very, very clever though. That you know that, that the players are available. You gotta quickly and try and go get them. Really, that's the that's the hope. I don't know. What about your your squad? Are you saying you need centre backs and a uh, holding? We need we need a yeah centre back holding midfielder. Uh, Sancho, I believe, will be coming. Just it's gonna <laughs> yeah, take a while for that to, to now. Yeah, and then I, I reckon we need another kind of. Uh, Grealish kind of player. That's some more of a forward player. When we we need we need five players in the summer. We need three that go into the team, and we need two that are squad players. So you can guess how that's going to be. I think we. I, I think everyone needs to be ruthless now. There's no more thinking about oh, can we save money here and there? If you lose out this summer, I reckon it's going to be a long time before you get back into it again. Because this summer, everyone's going to go for it again. And if you don't attack the window now. I think you're going to be losing two or three years on your rivals. Here's the thing. I really you do. say that. I think that's the case for us three clubs in general. But I think if we're talking about... Oh, I think Saeed's camera's just assumed that. <laughs> there he is. Uh, yeah, I was saying, cause that's key for us three in terms of clubs that are trying to yeah. up into the upper echelon. I think 
for Lib- for Tottenham and Arsenal, I know they're struggling with cash and they have to sell before they can buy. I think it's the same for Liverpool as well because that's why Liverpool didn't end up getting Werner. They were meant to be the first club to get them, but they didn't they didn't think the money would be suited for them at the time with their front three, so they pulled out of the race. So I'm thinking this is key for the three of us. The three of us really need to push through with this transfer window and we need to have the right source of transfers. Yeah. You guys, I know with Jaden, Jaden Sancho is probably going to United. We haven't really said much since we've gone for Ziyech and Werner. You guys, I know you're going to... I'm, I'm not sure you guys are looking at specifically, but after dropping out the top four, you're going to be looking for someone as well. And if anything, for Leicester, I think you guys should try looking at the Europa League. I mean, it's another way into Champions League qualification as well. And to be honest, with the level of competition that is, you, it's really worth considering looking at the, you're not going to face anyone that deep, especially within the first group stages, maybe last 32, even last 16. I mean, we know Arsenal got yeah. knocked out, but Arsenal, you guys aren't the only, that sort of issues. But the only dangerous thing with that, though, is it kind of curtails your season where, you know what I mean, it could have a bad exactly. effect on your team. That's the only worry for Leicester. Can they balance it out, the both of them? That's my only worry. Yeah, you do yeah. need to prior- prioritise, but I think that more la- that matters more at a later stage. I think earlier stages, even we didn't really struggle that much. It was once we got past the, the winter period, because the winter period is the one that really takes everything out. Yeah. So once you turn towards the January side, that's when you need to start thinking, OK, what can we do in the Premier League? What's our best projected ideas? And then is the Europa League a better idea for us to Champions League football? That's sort of the thing you're going to have to do. Yeah, I I, I kind of get that, but uh, we'll we'll have to see with Leicester because it's all up in the air to be honest yeah. with who we're going to sign and um, what's what's going on with with all this because I think a big factor as, as well is that I don't know if you um, either of you two have been to our ground, but it is I'd like to think it's quite a good ground and we get behind yeah. the team and it really works as a twelfth man. And mm. I know every team's going to say that, but I think you're that holding kind of the sound well there. To be fair, I like King Power, good away ground. Yeah, I, th- I, it's, I think it's a it's a it's a it's an all right ground as well for for who for other teams to come to and really push on. Uh, but we can sorry we can push on and and get behind the team and it really boosts us because it's still kind of I think your two clubs are kind of like the business end and we're still mm. at like this family club. Nobody's mm. going out there to support Leicester kind of in the same way as support Chelsea, um, Chelsea and Man, Man United and stuff. But for for you and um, Chelsea, who else do you think you're going to get in? Because you guys have locked it yeah, down okay. early. Because Pulisic looks like he's he's firing, which is good. Well, good, but obviously when he comes against us, it will be an absolute. It will be bad. Uh, <laughs> but you've got um, you've got what's it called? Werner in. You've got Ziyech in. So is it just the defense you're working on now? Literally just the defense. Right now our attack looks set. But and you know this just as well, sides with sides. If if your attack's good, but your defense is shocking, you're only going to go. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Right now, 100%. I think our team is perfect. If we start the season right now, we'd finish third comfortably. We wouldn't be in a top four race. We'd drop out of the title race probably early, but we'd be comfortable in third. And I think that's okay, but we're not really looking for third either. Like you guys said as well, we kind of want more than that. I want us to keep progressing as a club. And we've been progressing upwards over the last two years. Last season was a bit slow under Sari, but under Lampard, we're making waves. Now, our attack, which has been a huge problem for us over the last couple couple seasons, because our chance creation has been amazing, but our attack has just been pathetic. Last season, Eden Hazard was carrying us. Yeah. This season, I say Tammy was doing well for the start of the season, but as soon as we hit November, he just fell off a cliff. And to be honest, I think we've overplayed him a lot too much as well. Players have creeped in with goals here and then, but no one's really taken full responsibility for it. And I think our attack, our attack now is going to be a lot more centred on that. Timo one, you know exactly what he brings, and he brings goals. Ziyech has a crazy delivery, and after years of seeing Willian just kill attacks and corners, I'm so glad I'm going to see Ziyech's left foot on the end of those corners because I know he's finding a player. All we need now is defensive solidity and a goalkeeper because I'm, I've tried defending Kappa all season, and that Liverpool game just cemented it for me because <laughs> we were this close to coming back, and but I then you really don't mean, live with yeah, Anana. It's close. What was that? You don't live with Anana. I think Anana's similar to Kepa. He's a bit clumsy as well. I think you've got to get the right keeper, though. 
here's the thing, and it sounds so FIFA me saying this, but if we if we left Chilwell completely out and we still had the money for it, Oblak Black has a 120 million release clause, and I know Atletico Madrid are interested. I also know Atletico Madrid are really suffering with money issues because they owe 180 million to their owner. They're still paying off the Wonder Metropolitano Stadium, and they signed Jao Felix for 113 million. Oblak Black to Chelsea sounds really stupid. But when you see all of the other factors around it, I think it can happen. And if we had the balls to put a transfer on the table, let's test yeah. it. Yeah, it's a good. I think it'd be a really good signing for you guys as well. Um, it'd be that kind of signing that would take you from uh, kind of a fourth position to potentially challenging because mm. you're kind of after you've not really had that player that's really like kept you in games or kind of we've we've seen it with Schmeichel just kind of the amount of um, you've probably seen it with De Gea sometimes just yeah. the games and you're just like man I'm so glad we have this player just secure us at the back because the defense might be wonky but you know that somebody like that is going to come to a rescue and that could take you to potentially depending on how Lampard handles it because he's not really been in that terrain before but again he's done well to be in the terrain that he's in coming in to fourth position in his first season but to really come in and push for that. I think you guys can challenge for the league potentially next year if you get a decent signing in. It all depends yeah. on one or the other because with us, like you said, usually it's the goalkeeper that saves you or it's the defence that saves you. With us, it's been neither. Defensive organisation has been shambolic throughout so many games this season. Kepa, I'd say, I always say it's not completely his fault for how bad we've been defensively this season, but he does not help the case whatsoever. Like, I'm not going to lie, some of the stats on him are just criminal. Like, the lowest save percentage in England, I think. One of the wow. lowest save percentages in Europe in the top one. Yeah, league. shocking. Euro- European competitions, he's got, like, the fourth worst. And I'm sitting there like, this ain't even just one stat. This is everything. Yeah. There's no one <laughs> saving each other. And that's why I know what we can do. I know what we can achieve. But I also know what we have to get in order to do that. And I think the club knows it as well. That's why I do think Kepa's going because Lampard's never really looked too keen on him. He had that period in January where he benched him for a bit for Willy Caballero. And even when it comes to Willy Caballero, I like him. But he's not all that. We're overhyping because Kepa... Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's because it's it's not not better than the other one. That's the right way it is. It's the tale of the two worst. Caballero is just as rash. I mean, you saw for the 2-2 draw and Chilwell's goal. Was it Chilwell's goal or was it... I think it was Chilwell's goal. And Caballero, there was came a cross coming in over the goal. Yeah, he ran over to get it and came back too late. He's rash as well. Caballero is yeah. very rash. He's only looked safer because Kepa's worse. But neither one's going to be our answer, are they? No. I think he needs a top quality keeper to be in there. And I reckon he needed maybe... I think he can get away with the centre-backs as long as the, the, the left-back may be secured. And then... Attack is good. I think you might be a you might become another Liverpool where you score. Oh, it might be a game that, of yeah. five two, five two. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I hear that. Neutral's favourite. They, they went out and they got who they get. They got Van Dijk, commanded it. They got Allison, who's done a, a a good job. He's not done an amazing job, but he's done a good job. And they've just took that and ran with it. And and that's what 160 mil for them too. So about that. So. That's what's basically won them the league, as well as other things. Certain players have come in and kicked on, but they've they've found the weak spots, they've targeted it, and they've gone. We're just going to get the best person for the job that we can do, and yeah, that's where you guys, I think, need to need to kind of learn from that and see what they've done. Because obviously, they probably were hurting from last year, but the way they've gone about this year has just been. You, you kind of have to kind yeah. of applaud them and just go fair enough because they have been the best team in England. Yeah, we got. We really need to flex our muscles as well because. That transfer ban was a blessing in disguise for us with the whole pandemic that's come across this year. And that's kind of the reason why I've been spending so freely because half of these clubs do need to sell in order to buy first. We're sitting on a transfer ban money full of all the TV deal money and <laughs> the Europa League money that we earned from last season. We're sitting on the Eden Hazard money as well. I think yeah, the Morata yeah. money from Atletico should be coming in as well. And by the way, Atletico have been shagged by us on so many occasions the last few seasons. We have so much money that we can spend. And even if we win the FA Cup, that's more money coming in. Then there's a TV deal money from this season coming in as well. We have a lot of money to spend. And compared to most of the other clubs in, in European football right now, they don't. So we really need to start flexing our muscles. We have a very good opportunity. 
to make a lot of ground on a lot of rivals who don't have the same financial resources that we have. If we don't do that, because our transfer activity over the last couple of weeks, last couple of seasons have been shameful. And this has probably been the best one that we've seen in years. But I want to see what, what we're looking at at the end. Yeah, I think you guys have had a good... I think you've um, targeted, especially in the with Werner and Ziyech, have been two quality signings. I think we were, uh, yeah. well, we were saying to a couple of people on, on our side, I think Ziyech would have been a player that we could take into our team. And, but he, he went to live. Mm. I understand why he went to Chelsea at the same time. But he would have been the kind of signing that would not replace Morris, but a player that could get past the play and cross the ball in that we desperately kind yeah. of need in order to win games. Because I think you saw, Saeed, like firsthand, like we were, we were decent, but there was just, there was just there was somewhat missing, and at times yeah. like Man United were not the best team. Like I don't know Bruno no. Fernandez got man of the match, but he didn't have a man of the match performance. Uh, uh, I, so. I don't no. <laughs> De- definitely not, definitely not. I thought um, what uh, Lindelof was probably our best player. He kept yeah. Vardy at bay just about. So yeah, I don't know what they were playing at. <laughs> yeah, it was it was uh, I don't know, but he for other matches I agree because he's been sensational for you guys, but. The, the we should have capitalized like at, t- at the same time like Rashford just looked comp- at, if you watch the match you're just getting the ball and yeah, you're going, yeah. right I'm gonna hit it or, like from the halfway line yeah. just try and give it to Greenwood it was it was like it was it was good for us because it would keep our def- our defense can hit to handle that all day but you're just thinking it, 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 if you're gonna try and beat teams it wasn't it wasn't the way at the end of the day they just no. capitalized on a couple of our mistakes which isn't the way that a Man United team in the past would have no. I think we're just slowly building towards that. I think it's going to take time, but I think the naivety next year cannot be there. It really cannot. And we need to kick on because now it's going to get crunch time. Now we've, set the, we've raised the level in terms of getting third, but now we need to kick on. And that's my worry. I don't know if we're going to kick on from this. It's, it's a good point because I think like with Ancelotti and Mourinho and stuff coming in, do you think that's going to be your weak spot with like the management? Because that is yeah, going to be an area of concern. It. That's my area of concern. I don't know if with Oli, I don't know if he's tactically astute to, to kind of get us from where we are now to build us again. That's my only worry. I look at other managers, they look, you know, they've got experience, they've got the know how. Is Oli the man to take us maybe to the next step? I'm not sure. That's why, I don't know, maybe it sounds crazy, but maybe if we were to get in Pochettino or something like that, where he could build us with a, come with a plan to take us to the next step and say, Oli, you've done, you've done your job now. You know we're gonna we're gonna move on from here, but thanks very much. For me, that would be the solution. But I, I think the club are now on a on a on a feel good factor, and they don't want that to to, to finish. Now. They don't want it to to end. Yeah, I I, I can see that because I can see the same thing happening with with Leicester as well. Because this seat, especially to, towards the end half of the season, Ancelotti out tactics him. Mourinho out-tacticed him. Obviously, Guardiola and Klopp yeah. out-tacted him just with brute force and money. Uh, Lampard, I don't think you guys quite out-tacticked us for, for the two games that you no. played against us. Nah. But, um, and Oli didn't really either. But these lower... T- and Arteta, uh, uh, it's too early to tell. But he, he has some good games, has some bad games. But they, they, were, they were more threatening side than the two Chelsea games that we played, in my Hello? opinion. The one game we played at Arteta um, against uh, Arteta's Arsenal because Lampard, I think in the first half against uh, Chelsea, w- you ran us all over the place. And I was like, oh, go- thank God we're only going in 1-0 because, uh, again, it was an issue of you weren't converting your chances. And it, obviously Same you guys Chelsea. have come a long far. Uh, you've got And with Werner coming in, obviously that's going to change it. But I think us three have got kind of the most naive managers kind of, uh, and that's probably going to be where, even if we strengthen in players, is the tactics going to be the issue? And I think out of us three, I think probably, uh, I think Brendan Rodgers has maybe got the most experience, but I don't think that counts for much because the players are, player for player is still not as good as your two sides. Okay. As a final question for around all this up, um, just based off, off how this season finished, how optimistic are you guys for next season? Or are you guys feeling a little bit worried about it? So, do you want to go? Uh, I'm a bit optimistic. Yeah, I'm a bit optimistic because I feel like with Sancho, we've got a, a real, genuine, world-class player there that's going to become world-class. Um, 
And I think we, we've now got the foundations to build on the Champions League. I'm excited for that. Champions League football, Premier League, Wednesday, Wednesday Saturday. No, not, not, everyone knows what they're, when they're playing, what they're doing. You know what I mean? And I feel like it's, it's good to be back, man. It's good to be back to normality where Man United are. And I think we're, we're going to be excited with new signings coming in. Then we're going to be excited. So, yeah, man, I'm excited, man. It's good to look forward to Champions League football. Sorry, Leicester. It's all good. No, you guys, um, we were punished for our mistakes and that, that's what happened. And also, if we, were to, if we were to get in and beat you guys, we would have been in pot four and I think that would have ruined us. Um, the idea of coming against a Bayern Munich or a Real Madrid or a Juventus at our oh, ground would have been nice just to see. But if we can't beat a Man United side as weak as they are and as tired as they were, we ain't got a chance in the Champions League. So... Initially, I think all Leicester fans were a bit upset, but looking pragmatically, it was probably the right decision and you guys deserve to beat us. I think for us, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see because transfer-wise, I can't see us getting in too many players. It just depends on if we can sell Chilwell to you guys for a high enough amount and if we can strengthen. But it's keeping the team fit and keeping the, the, the players in the game because the issue is, if you get, for example, we saw... we. Um, the manager doesn't fancy Ryan Bennett anymore, so he looks like he's going back to Wolves uh, for after the loan period. Morgan's our third choice keeper at the moment, third choice centre back, and as you saw, he's good against a big guy like Burnley. Stick him on, and he'll just uh, he'll, uh, Chris Wood not got much pace, and he can physically get him off the ball. But you just saw when he came in with that rash challenge, you were like, this is going to be a penalty all day, and they're the kind of mistakes that are going to be punished as well. So we'll have to see for Leicester. It depends on how seriously we're going to take the Europa League because obviously a lot of these players have had Champions League experience before as well. So I I'm not feeling as confident because I'm not sure who we're going to sign, but we definitely need a couple more signings and hopefully pushing on from this, I think we can get some decent decent players in. But it's that balance because our squad depth is nowhere near that you guys have. But still keep, still keep faith. Hopefully we can get a top 10 finish next season. All right, guys, well, this has been your top four fallout discussion video. I again, want to thank Neil from the Beyond the 90 LCFC podcast for jumping on and Saeed from United Central as well. If you guys haven't checked out their content already, I'm going to be leaving links down in the description below again. So don't forget to check out their YouTube channels. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And we'll see you guys very, very soon for some FA Cup final content. Let's hope we beat Arsenal. Up the shells. Bye-bye. <laughs>